Shalom, shalom, good morning. Brothers and sisters, good morning. Good morning, good morning. All right. Okay, so according to the Bible, we are the Israelites, the Bible speaks of, um, which are the Jews. How many of you know of Jesus Christ? Everybody's hand should be up, right? Let me ask you something. Let me ask you a question. You have two pictures up here, right? Which one is Jesus Christ? This one? How many of you read the Bible? Or have read the Bible? Okay, everybody's hands is up. That's good that you read the Bible. Now, how many of you understand the Bible? Okay, so let me ask you another question. Where in the Bible can you show me that Jesus Christ is a European man or a white man like this? Where in the Bible does it say that? Now, if you look around, if, if you look around, everybody's hand is down. You know why everybody's hand is down? It's not in the Bible. Nowhere in the Bible can you read about a European savior. Nowhere in the Bible can you read about Jesus Christ being white. The people of the Bible are your people, look just like you, black, and we're gonna prove that today. First, let's start with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's get the book of Revelation. We're gonna read chapter one and verse one, then you're gonna jump to 14. Revelation chapter one, verse one. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. It says to show to his servants. God gave a revelation to John, who was on the island of Patmos, to show things to his servants. The servants of God, brothers and sisters, are the Israelites. The servants of God are the Israelites. Let's see what God told John to show the servants. Come on. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Okay, so let's start with that. We have two pictures here, right? We're gonna play a game called the process of elimination. You have two pictures here, two depictions. Both people are claiming to be Christ. Both are claiming to be Christ. Hold this so it don't fall. Both pictures are depictions of Christ, correct? The scripture says the hair on his head were white like wool. Does this man over here this image right here, does he have white hair? No. And we see this in our TVs, we see these in movies, in magazines, in the churches. Many of your mothers, many of your grandmothers have these pictures at home. And this man, you can find it in what's called Christianity, Baptist, Seven-day Adventist, ap um, uh, Apostolate, all these different religions, they all worship this man, this image as Jesus Christ. Now the Bible said the hair on his head was white. He does not have white woolly hair. Wool is the texture. Wool is the texture, the texture of your hair. You young men right here, you young women. Okay, those who haven't permed their hair. Your natural hair is woolly, woolly. This is woolly hair. When you look it up in the dictionaries, mainly the old dictionaries, it tells you woolly is the hair of the Negro. Hair of black people, woolly, coarse, nappy. That's woolly hair. This is not woolly hair. Mm -hmm. So that's strike one on this. So you put an X on this for now, and that's a check for this picture. This is the correct depiction. Come on. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. Is his hair white as snow? Is his hair white as snow? Yes. Come on. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Now that's talking about the whites of his eyes. Why does the Bible say that Jesus Christ's eyes was be like a flame of fire? Was when Christ was on the earth, was he shooting fire out of his eyes? So why does it say his eyes were as a flame of fire? Does anybody know? Brother right there? Huh? No, a flame of fire is not white. 
Why does it say that? Let me ask you something. What was Christ's first miracle? What was his first miracle? Very good. She's studying the Bible. Christ's first miracle, he turned water into wine. Now we're going to read about a prophecy of Jesus Christ in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 49 verse 12. His eyes shall be red with wine. So the whites of the Messiah's eyes, the whites of Christ's eyes shall be red with wine. Are the whites of his eyes red? No. Are the whites of his eyes red? Yes. Why? Because Christ, when he turned water into wine, guess what? You don't think he drank a little? He drank a little wine, but he was not a drunkard. He was not a drunkard, but he drank wine. So the, the whites of his eyes turned into red. In the book of Revelation, it says it will be like a flame of fire. Write it down so when you go home, you can read it for yourself. Come on. Revelation chapter 1 verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet like unto fine brass. What is the color of brass? B-R-A-S-S. -S. What is the color of brass? Brown. So it says that his feet, his feet was like unto fine brass. If you look at this gentleman's feet right here, he has slippers on, right? His feet looks like the color of the rest of his body. So Christ's feet were brown as if they burned in a furnace. Now, if you take brass and you burn it, you burn it in a furnace, what color does it become? Black. black. You burn anything, it becomes black. So Christ was a dark, dark, dark-skinned man. Christ was a black man. This guy doesn't look like he was burnt in a furnace. Look at him. Pale. He looked like milk. Almost the color of milk. Pale. Right? Let me show you some more. Have you ever heard of King Solomon? Yes. King Solomon was related to Jesus Christ. King Solomon was Christ's great, 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 great grandfather, right? Yes. Let's hear what King Solomon said. The songs of songs, which is Solomon. So King Solomon wrote the song of Solomon. Come on. The song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. I am black. I am what? I am black, but comely. But handsome. Come on. O ye daughters of Jerusalem. Uh -huh. As the tents of Kedar. Kedar was one of the sons of Ishmael. Ishmael is the father of the Arabs. Ishmael is the father of the Arabs. The original Arabs were black. So King Solomon says he's black and comely, black and handsome. Let's get Job. Let's, how many of you heard of the prophet Job? You heard of the prophet Job? All right, let's see what color Job is. Job, chapter 30, verse 30. My skin is black upon me. Job says my skin, my skin, skin is black upon me. So all throughout the Bible we read black, 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 but when you go to church is white, white, white. So there seems to be a problem. It's called white supremacy. All your churches over here, on, in the land of Sierra Leone, on the continent of Africa, is built on white supremacy. Remember, who colonized Sierra Leone? What nation of people? White people. What, is the, what was the name of them? The British. The British colonized Sierra Leone. And when he colonized you, he gave you religion. When he colonized you, he gave you religion. He gave you white man Jesus to keep you at a lower state. You know why? Because the white man knows that the Israelites are above all people. Deuteronomy 7 verse 6. Let's read that. I'm going to read you something what God says about you. Because you are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. The white man came over to this land, took many of you, sold you into slavery in the Americas, in the Caribbean, in Europe, and many of you stayed behind. Now you're running around calling yourselves what? Timne tribe, Mende, Mandinke, Limba, Sorubu. All these different tribes, right? All these different tribes, right? 
You guys are divided in tribes. But let me ask you something. You can't read about none of those tribes in the Bible. How come when you open up the Bible, you don't read about the Mende tribe? Because God never called you that. God called you the Israelites. I'm going to show you what God wrote about you. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. So God says you brothers and sisters of Sierra Leone, you are holy people unto the Lord thy God. Come on. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. You hear that? God said he chose you out of all nations. You have the Arabs, you have the Europeans, you have the Asians, whether it be Japanese, Chinese, Taiwan, whatever, right? You have the ancient Hamitic African nations. God said he chose the Israelites to be above all people. Come on. The Lord, thy God, have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people. So God says that we are above all people. That are upon the face of the earth. So let me ask you something now. I need you to think. If God says we are a special people, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Why are we in such poverty? Why is there so much poverty on the continent of Africa? Why are your brothers and sisters who were taken and, and brought as slaves to the America in the same poverty that you're in? Why are your brothers and sisters that was taken and brought as slaves to Jamaica, Haiti, Dominican Republic, why are they in such poverty? Does anybody have the answer? The answer's in the Bible. But they don't read it in church. We're going to read. We're going to show you why. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28, verse um, uh, 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. This is Moses. Listen up. This is when, this is when Moses took us up out of Egypt. How many of you know about that history? Moses in Egypt. What happened with Moses in Egypt? Somebody raise your hand and tell me. What happened? Moses in Egypt. He freed the slaves and all throughout history whenever you read the word slaves There's always an identity of people a certain people that always identify with slavery Those are black people all throughout history black people So Moses freed the slaves out of the hand of the Egyptians The original Egyptians were black people today. They would be called your Sudanese or Watusis Okay Moses, a black person, freed a nation of people from another black people, right? Now, we're going to find out what Moses told the Israelites when he freed them. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Moses said, listen, listen. God just freed you from the hands of the Egyptians. If you don't listen to God and follow his commandments, this is what's going to happen to your kids in the future. We're about to read it. Come on. To observe, to do all his commandments. To follow all of his commandments, not religion. God did not give you Christianity the way it's celebrated today. God did not give you Baptists, Seven Day Adventists, Jehovah's Witness. He did not give you none of these religions. God gave you laws, statutes, and commandments. Come on. And his statues, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. We're about to read some of these curses. We're going to find out if the Bible's a true book. We are about to read what happened to your forefathers and what's currently happening to you today. Why? Because we as the Israelites have broken the commandments of God. Come on. Verse 16. Verse 32. Verse 32. Uh -huh. Thy and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. The Bible says, thy sons and thy daughters shall be given to another people. Everybody stay where you're at, but focus on this picture right here. The Bible says your sons and your daughters will be given to another people. Whose sons and daughters was given to another people? Us, very good. Black people, the other brother said slavery. Whenever you hear the word slavery, there's always a group of people that can identify with that condition. Those are called black people, you. Now look at here, you have the ships, cargo slave ships. 16, 1500s came over here, 
to Sierra Leone. You have Sierra Leone somewhere over here on the map. If you see it, you can look at it right here in Africa, right? Sierra Leone right here, look. Came here, took the blacks and brought them into slaves and many of you were left behind. Look at this, slavery. We are about to read about all of this soon. So our sons and daughters was given unto another people. Read, come on. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Uh -huh. And thy eyes shall look and fall with longing for them all the day long. You hear what the Bible is saying? Your eyes would look and fail with longing for them, meaning there's nothing you can do to save your people. What is the name of the man from here? Babu Say it in the mic. Babu Ray. Babu Ray. How many of you heard of Babu Ray? Babu Ray tried to save his people, but he failed. Why? Because the only person, the only person that could save us. Listen up, listen, listen. Listen. The only person that could save us from our condition is the black man, Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah. He's the one that God is going to give his power to to save us. Okay, read verse 33. Verse 33. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. You hear what the Bible is saying? Hey, 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 listen, listen. No fighting. Stop. Listen. Listen up. The Bible says, the Bible says the fruit of your land shall a nation which you don't know eat up. The British came, took all your resources. Colonized Sierra Leone. Gave some of you his last name. Gave you his religion. All in the name of white Jesus. Why? To take all your resources. Sierra Leone is known for what? Natural mineral. What is Sierra Leone known for? Huh? Okay, what else? Diamonds. Diamonds. Many of your fathers, many of your uncles work in the mining field. They come here, they take all the diamonds, all the gold, and they leave you in poverty. That is a curse. Read it again. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shall be only oppressed and crushed always. You know what the Bible is saying, young man? The Bible says, thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. You don't know where your next meal is coming. You don't know if you're gonna have food tomorrow. You don't know if you're, war if you're gonna have water tomorrow. What happens if those bags, those bags that I see back there with water, what happens if that gets cut off? You're gonna die of thirst. God says you're gonna be oppressed always. All right, jump to 47. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 47. Because thy servants not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart uh -huh. for the abundance of all things, uh -huh. therefore shall thy serve thy enemies which the Lord shall sin against thee in hunger. And in, what? in hunger. Hey, listen. God says you're going to have to serve your enemies. The white man, the enemy, the British man, all these nations in the want of all things. So if you need food, who do you have to serve? Your enemy, because they're the ones that bring the food into Sierra Leone. They're the ones that ship the food over here. Read. In thirst and in nakedness. Thirst, look at this. Who controls this? Grab spring water. Who controls this? Does he control it? Can you go to him so he can supply you this? Who controls the importation of water in Sierra Leone? The white man. This is written in the Bible thousands of years ago. But because we don't listen, because we're so rebellious, we broke God's commandments, now we're suffering as, as God's people. We have to go to the other nations for everything. For food, for water, for clothes. The clothes on your back, the shirts. Where was the shirts made? You, re you think it was made in Africa? Look at the tags. Look at the tags. Look at the tags on the back of your shirts. It's not made in Sierra Leone. It's not made in Sierra Leone. You might be able to get some fabric and give it to your mother to sew it, but those fabrics are imported from another people. That is a shame. That is a shame to live like that. And the reason we're in this condition is not just you, me too. 
the reason we are in this condition is because we broke God's commandments. Come on. And in want of all things, whatever you need, you have to go to your enemies. Come on. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. The same man that you got to go to for food, water, anything you want. God says that same man is going to put a yoke of iron on your neck. Let's see if this is true. God says your enemy is going to put a yoke of iron on your neck. Does he have a yoke of iron on his neck? Yes. Does he have a yoke of iron on his neck? Yes. Absolutely, yes. So guess what? The Bible's a true book. One thing you're going to know, God is not a man that he should lie. If God says something is going to happen, it's going to happen. And it happened. Look at that. Slavery. Who did this to us? The other nations. Mainly the so-called white men. The European nations. The same people that come into your land, they come across all these beaches. There's a beach here, I forgot the name of it, where the white man, mainly the Lebanese, you know who the Lebanese are, right? They control a lot of your hotels. They built a lot of those hotels. A lot of them will come to this beach and look for what? Our beautiful sisters to prostitute, to have sex with, pay them money for sex. A lot of these people, that's what they come here for. These people are not here for your own good. They're either here to take your resources or take your woman or give you white man Jesus to keep you brainwashed. And it's the truth. Many of you are probably saying, oh, well, that doesn't sound right. It is truth, and the truth hurts. Okay? Let's get jump to verse 48. Go ahead, go ahead. That was verse 48. Jump to 60. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. The word Egypt means bondage, slavery. The word Egypt means bondage, slavery. Let's prove it. God says, I'm going to bring you into Egypt again with ships. The first time the Israelites went into Egypt, they didn't go with ships. They walked into ships. They walked into Egypt. Now this Egypt that God is talking about means slavery. We're going to prove it. Come on. Okay. Exodus chapter 20 verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So Egypt means bondage. God said, I'm going to bring you into Egypt again with ships. How did your black brothers go into slavery in America? Ships, look, ships. They came us, they took us off the west coast of Africa, Sierra Leone, Ghana, Senegal, Guinea, Benin, Liberia, and so forth, and brought us over here. And many of those African Americans, when slavery was emancipated, they came back to Sierra Leone, and they mixed in. The Israelites are mixed in in Sierra Leone. So what did we just read? Bible prophecy. Read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Uh -huh. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. You're not going to see your homeland Israel ever again. Our original homeland was Israel. Israel is in Northeast Africa. Israel is a part of Africa. Okay, but now who's in Israel today? Now when you think about Israel, you see white people. Why? Because they colonized Israel when they forced you out of Israel. Come on. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. You hear that? God says we're going to be sold unto our enemies. Look at this. Look at this right here. First you had the sub-Saharan slave trade. The Arabs sold us into slavery first. Now many of you running around following Islam. You don't even realize that Islam was forced upon your, your, your great-great-grandparents. Okay? Then you had um, the other slave. What's the other um, thing? Come on, pick it up. The one with the yokes. Then you had the transatlantic slave, slave trade. When we were sold to the white men. God calls them your enemy. Read it again. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. Your friend. Your enemies. What does God call the white man? It's in the Bible. So we're going to read what the Bible says. We're not going to sugarcoat it to make you feel good. 
we're not going to tell you what you want to hear. We're going to tell you what the Bible says. We're going to tell you what God says. That is our problem. We've been in the church for too long. Okay? Read. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men, for slave men, and bond women, and slave women. And no man shall buy you. And no man shall buy you. That's Northern Kingdom. Put that down. Put it down. And no man shall save you. No man shall save you from this condition. Brothers and sisters, there's only one man that can save us from this condition. And that's Jesus Christ. Let's read it. Luke. There's only one man that can save us. This man right here. Now, we're not saying that this is Jesus. We're saying that this is a d depiction, a drawing of what the Bible said he would look like. Okay, so don't start to worship this. We're not supposed to worship any images. This is just a depiction of what he would look like. So let's find out the purpose of Jesus Christ. You're going to get me Luke, and then you're going to get me Acts 5.29. Luke chapter 1, verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Blessed he be the Lord God of Israel. The God of the heavens is only the God of the Israelites. He is not the God of all nations. God is only the God of the Israelites. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Come on. For he has visited and redeemed his people. Come on. And have raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Come on. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, uh -huh. which have been since the world began, uh -huh. that we should be saved from our enemies. What is the purpose of Christ? That we should be saved from our enemies. Brothers and sisters, listen. What is the purpose of Christ? That we should be saved from our enemies. I want to hear you say it. What is the purpose of Christ? Read, say it again, louder. The purpose of Christ is to save us from our enemies. Okay? And give us remission of sins. Okay, brothers and sisters, y'all understand? Go home, study the flyers, show it to your parents. We have a phone number on there you can call. Okay, so do you have any questions? What is your name? Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. No, no, right here, right here. Come, come, come. Come here, come here. Okay, so, sure. Give me your name first. I'm out to Kamara. Wow. Kamara? Kamara, how are you? How come do you know that this is Jesus? Did, were you here from the beginning when we started? Yes. Kamara, you weren't paying attention. Let's read it. <laughs> How do you know this Jesus Christ? I get it, I get it. How do you know this is Jesus Christ? <laughs> now, hold on, I'm asking you. You don't know. You don't know. But look, we're going to show you. Hold on, this. We're going to show you how we know Jesus Christ looked like this. Listen, listen, listen. Kamara, you weren't paying attention. You were distracted. Because we read it. We're going to show you. You have two pictures. Oh, how old are you, Kamara? How old are you? How old are you? 13. How long, how long, how many years have you been going to church? 13 years. 13 years? Right? You never, all your time, no, no, leave off the mic, because I want to talk to her. All your years in church, you never asked your pastor, how do you know this is Jesus Christ? You never asked your teachers, all your 13 years, how do you know this is Jesus Christ? But we're going to give you the answer. Let's go. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. His head and his hair were white like wool. So the Bible says the hair of his head was white like wool. You understand, Kamara? Is his hair white like wool? Say it in the mic. I can't hear you. No. Okay. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Uh -huh. As white as snow. Is his hair white as snow? 
and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Are the whites of his eyes red like a flame of fire? And his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. It, does his skin look like brass burned in the furnace? Does his skin look like brass burnt in the furnace? Meaning dark. So there's your answer. That's how we know that Christ is a black man according to the Bible. And all we read, when we read Job, King Solomon, they're black. Black people in the Bible, guess what? You look like Christ. Christ looked like you. From the same family, whether you believe it or not. But we have a lot of self-hatred inside of us. That's why we deny this image. Any other questions? Yes, Captain Blake. Yeah, I have a question. What's your name? My name is Samuel A. Samuel. <coughs> Samuel A. Samuel. Samuel. Yeah. Okay. Um, the question is, um, I know that... Okay, first of all, let me ask you. In, in which uh, uh, book was Jesus described? The description of Jesus, how, in which book? The book, of, the book of Revelation. Revelation. Okay, what, what, is the mean, what, what is the meaning of Revelation? What is the meaning of Revelation? To reveal. To reveal. Yes. That is the misery. Revelation, Revelation means a misery. Something is, you cannot oh, wait, wait, wait. see. It yeah. what? It's a misery. Something that you cannot see with your physical eyes, no, but to be revealed to me. That is the listen, meaning of Revelation. Listen, yeah. Revelation, what is the root word of Revelation? What is the what is the root word of revelation? Say revelation come out the root. The root the root of revelation okay, me as for me I don't understand my own understanding is that no 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 not your own understanding. Okay, okay, it's from the Bible. It's from the Bible. Send it, send it. We're dialoguing, so I'm trying to teach you. In order for you to learn, you have to and listen. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The root word of revelation means to reveal. Yeah, to reveal. Means to show. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Yeah, that's right. Okay, that's um Hey listen, listen, listen. Listen. Hey, I'm gonna read verse 12. Because you said you said it was a mystery, right? Yeah. Now listen to what John the Revelator is about to say. Hold it, hold it. I'm gonna read it. It say, I turn to see. Are you, are you not seeing me with your eyes? So hold on, if you're seeing it, if you're seeing me with your eyes, is, is there a mystery right now? Okay, you know, well, no, no, ask me a question, yes or no? No, no, no. Okay, now hold on, listen to the Bible. And I turn to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw. Saw. Saw means what? That's what it says. He turned around, he said, I saw with his eyes. Seven golden candlesticks. How many candlesticks are there? Seven. Okay, he said he seen that with his eyes. It said, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the son of man. What did they call Christ when he walked the earth? What? What is another name they called Jesus Christ when he walked the earth? Oh, the son of man. They call Jesus Christ the Son of Man. Yeah, okay. Okay, let's read. No, I'm not asking. Oh, let me finish. I, I understand this. I understand all that. Hold on, let me finish. Let me finish. Let's ask Christian answer, please, because of the time. I don't want any time. No, hold on. Let me finish reading the description of Christ. Because for some reason, after reading the description three times, you still confused. It says, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the past with a golden girdle. His head and his hands were white like wool, as white as snow. His eyes was as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass as they burned in the furnace. This is the image of Christ that uh, John the Revelator said he saw. That image this right one, there? This one? Look, this is the depicted image of what John the Revelator is, saw. Is it the true Listen, one? he says seven golden candlesticks, white woolly hair, skin like brass that's burnt in the furnace. What's the seven golden candlesticks at? What's the white woolly hair? And what's the skin like brass that was burned in the furnace? No, wait, wait. I, I want to ask questions. The questions are, let me ask the question so that you can answer me. So, okay. The question is that, um, was Jesus alive when, uh, when John received the revelation or Jesus was gone by then? 
That's was, a was, was he alive? Was he alive before you? That's, that's a rhetorical question. We know the answer to that. No, the, answer, answer the, the answer is the answer is he resurrected and went back. Resurrected. So by then, did Jesus transfigured, or Jesus was like you? Was like, was gonna, like you, or you he was transfigured? Let me give you the answer in the in the Bible. <laughs> A lot of times we read we read past words that we don't understand. Come on, and then go back to Revelation. This is what said we left out. Yeah, go ahead, read that. Luke chapter twenty-four, verse thirty-nine. Now look, this this after Jesus Christ has died and risen from the dead, right? Listen to me. Yeah. I'm going to read the book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 39. Yeah. This took place after Jesus Christ died and risen from the dead. Yeah. His apostles came to him and they were scared. Listen to what they said. Let's read. Luke, chapter 24, verse 39. Behold, my hands and my feet, that it is I, myself, held to me. And see, for his spirit have not flesh and bones as he see me have. So this is when Christ resurrected, right? And he said, handle me. Hold on to my feet and my hands. Christ was in the flesh after he resurrected. Now let's go back to Revelation. I want to show you something. Yeah, so me, I want to see it and I want to hear it. Because a lot of times what we have in our minds is called low self-esteem. And we think the white man is God and the white man is Jesus. Because why we hate ourselves. That's the problem with our people. Come on. Go back to where it's all what you was reading about the candlesticks. The like unto. Revelation chapter 1 verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks. One like unto the son of man. It says one like unto the son of man. Who is the son of man? Jesus. Why does John say like unto? What is the word like unto? It's like. It is not it just seems alike. It seems alike. What was the difference between when Christ was on the earth and he resurrected and he came to John on the island of Patmos? What was the difference? The difference was that when Jesus was resurrected, when he was when he was risen from the dead, when he resurrected to heaven, to heaven, but whenever he, he appears, he appears in music. He, 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 he didn't appear in that because according to the book, that when Jesus is coming back in the book of Revelation, he's not coming like you. Uh, he, he will come. He will only come like you when he comes the second time. So whenever he comes, he will come in misery. He will not come like like he will not come in the whole the whole way like the you. Bible, so so Jesus let me give you the answer. Let me give you the answer, man, because you don't know what you're talking about. I know what I'm talking. No, you don't. Trust me. You don't even know your identity. You're still calling yourself Sarah Leon. I am a black boy. Listen, created by God. listen, God listen, listen, you. listen, listen. John says, "Like unto the Son of Man." The only difference, the only difference, listen, the only difference was that his hair was white like wool. That's the only difference. His hair was, no, 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 leave him the mic. Leave him, leave him. The only difference, Samuel, Samuel, listen, listen. The only difference, young man, is that his hair was white like wool. I'm going to show you. Daniel, give me Daniel. Why? Why does he say like unto the son of man? Because the only difference when he appeared to John was the white woolly hair. Christ died at the age of 33. His hair wasn't white then. But when he came back in his glory, his hair, his hair was fully white because he resembled the Father in heaven. Let's go We're going to show you. Listen. Let's We're going to show you Daniel 7 verse 9. Come on. Daniel chapter 7 verse 9. I beheld to the thrones were cast down. And the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. So Christ said that if you see me, you see the Father in heaven. So the Father in heaven had pure woolly hair. Christ had pure woolly hair after he resurrected. It's the same thing. Okay, let's the same let's thing. Conclude. So let me ask you something. Let's conclude. Let me ask you something. Yeah. From from your understanding, your ideology. Are you saying that the Jews are white people? Yeah. Okay, can you show me in the Bible where it says that the Israelites are Caucasian? 
okay, to, to, to describe them. To describe, I want, wait, listen. I want the chapter and verse in the Bible. Okay, uh, let me say this because in fiscal. Let Samuel, me Samuel, 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 Sam